balloon-like object is lying on the title flat. When we carefully pull it up, it has something that looks like roots attached to it. So what exactly is this thing? Let's take a closer look under the microscope. Today, I'm here to show you something truly fascinating. We came back to the tidal flats because last time, when I was here looking for blue button jellies, I found a strange jelly-like creature. At first, I thought it might be some kind of jellyfish, but it was stuck firmly in the ground. I couldn't see any organs inside, and honestly, it didn't really feel like a living animal. So I returned to the tidal flat to investigate its secret, and I found it right away. What is this balloon-like object? First, let's gently pull it out. Once removed, you can see root-like parts that have been buried in the mud. I couldn't stop thinking about it, so after placing it in a container, I quickly asked a nearby restaurant for permission to use their space, set up a microscope, and started observing. When I magnified this balloon-like thing, I saw countless tiny objects inside. Zoom in even more, and you can see these oval, rice grain shaped structures packed tightly together. Surprisingly, this entire mass is an egg capsule filled with polychaete worm eggs. Some polychaete species produce a jelly like capsule made of mucus. Some species attach their egg capsules to shells or rocks, while others bury them directly in the mud, just like this one. This polychaete egg capsule works much like a frog's egg mass. The jelly-like mucus keeps moisture inside, suppresses bacterial growth, and protects the eggs within. A single capsule can contain hundreds to thousands of eggs. Once the eggs hatch, the larvae swim around in this form and eventually grow into adults. But if all these eggs successfully grew to adulthood, there'd be an unbelievable number of worms, right? Fortunately, polychaete larvae and adults serve as food for many organisms in the marine ecosystem. This helps keep their population somewhat balanced. But the truth is, polychaetes are still extremely abundant. All these straw-like tubes sticking out of the tidal flat are actually polychaete homes. You can see piles of what look like droppings. These are also traces left by polychaetes. Most polychaetes live in burrows beneath the mud. As they feed, the mud they ingest, and later excrete, gets pushed out of the burrow like this. So all these signs are evidence of polychaete activity. Species in the polychaete family number about 450 worldwide. Pretty amazing, right? While walking around the tidal flats, we also found many other species. A tiny octopus, mantis shrimp, the mantis of the sea, slaters, fish that hop around on the water's surface, sea pen, or cavernularia obesa, various shrimp and crustaceans, an incredible variety of marine life. On the way home, we came across one more surprising sight. A wide area of the tidal flat was completely covered in red. When we went closer, we found it was a sea plant called sea blight also known as Sueda japonica. Sea blight is normally green, but from September to October it turns bright red, coloring the entire tidal flat. It's easy to assume plants can't grow in tidal flats, but many species have adapted to the salty environment. Recently, these salt-tolerant plants in tidal flat ecosystems have been receiving enormous attention. Just like land plants store carbon through photosynthesis, Salt-tolerant plants and seaweeds absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide and store carbon in tidal flat ecosystems. The carbon absorbed and stored by these marine ecosystems is called blue carbon. Blue carbon is stored faster and preserved for much longer than the green carbon stored in forests. Because of this, blue carbon is now seen as a key strategy for fighting climate change. To protect these valuable tidal flats, efforts such as restoring tidal flat habitats, creating seagrass meadows, and preserving salt plants are now expanding around the world as part of a global movement to manage tidal flats in a systematic way. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science.
revealing the science behind mysterious things.